from the Weather NorCal Command Center, this is your evening update. Ants Meats and Grocery is much more than a grocery store. We carry a full line of quality meats, local and organic vegetables, and a large variety of fish, Green Mountain Smart Control pellet grills, and a full deli case of sandwiches and side dishes. Well, Friday and Saturday are sold out for the Reading Rodeo. However, you still have hope if you want to get to that Reading Rodeo. You have tickets for tomorrow and Thursday that are still available. Go to ReadingRodeo.com to purchase those tickets now. If you haven't done so already because you want to make sure that you can get those tickets by the way if you're heading out to the rodeo tomorrow here is the forecast i will tell you this it's going to be the hottest day for the reading rodeo i'm expecting a high of about 99 to 100 but by the time we get to the reading rodeo time should be somewhere in the upper 90s that's when the gates open but when the rodeo starts at 7 p.m It'll be about 92 degrees and then temperatures as we get near the end of the rodeo after the sun sets, we're back down into the 80s. So it should be a lot more pleasant as you do go into the evening hour. So if you are going to be there for the early part of the rodeo, make sure you got plenty of water, sunscreen, the works, right? Because it is going to be pretty hot out there. We do have increased fire danger. Valley highs are going to be approaching, if not reaching, 100 degrees for some of us tomorrow, especially the north end of the valley. There are going to be some Sierra afternoon thunderstorms here over the next few days, so that's something to be aware of if you're going to be hanging out in that area. But we do have a cooling trend for the end of the week, and in particular, as we go into next week, you'll see that on the seven-day forecast, but tomorrow, there it is. We could see 100 degrees in some spots for the valley. And tomorrow's the peak of this warming trend because I do expect temperatures to drop after tomorrow for most of us i think the mountains may actually see some of the mountains may see a peak on thursday which we'll get into here in a second here's a good future cast tomorrow morning i don't think we're going to see a lot of fog along the coast maybe a little bit near eureka then we go into tomorrow afternoon and we're really not even seeing much in the way of cloud cover even for the higher elevation so a dry day plenty of sunshine but looks like some fog trying to make its way back to parts of central humboldt county along the coast but del nord county southern humboldt county looks like it's mainly sunny now as we go into your thursday morning now we're starting to see that fog and that marine layer to kind of push back for most of the coast by 6 a.m even making its way into some of those inland valleys but it looks like del nord county is seeing just a little bit of a break at this point point. and as we go through the day on thursday Again, you see how it's just kind of barely making its way to the coast. So I, I think Crescent City can be kind of borderline between where we're seeing some of that fog and where we actually have some clearing. However, uh, most of Humboldt County is going to be socked in with that fog, and, uh, but Southern Humboldt County may see a bit of a break from that. We're also seeing some clouds developing in the higher elevations Thursday afternoon, but I still expect to see mainly dry conditions. All right, let's talk about that fire weather risk out there. Today, you can see it was in that low, kind of the low is the green, right? The, the yellow is where we're kind of in that moderate risk. And that's where we were today. With the winds blowing from the north, that tends to dry things out a bit, gives us lower humidity. I think the winds will continue to blow from the north tonight and through the day tomorrow. Could see gusts upwards of around 15 to 20 miles per hour. We're beginning to see some oranges here on the map. That's indicating some areas that could see higher fire danger. Because the humidity is dropping, we've got those north winds. Now, what you'll notice, though, as we go into Wednesday night, and in particular Thursday, winds are more from the south. Although, I mean, the humidity is still going to be low, but the fire risk is going to drop as a result of those south winds, and that's going to make things a little bit better out there. All right, so we're kind of in that time of the year. We need to start thinking about fire safety, fire prevention, right? So just some quick reminders that you don't want to dry, drive on dry grass and make sure that if you're towing a trailer that your chains are not scraping up against the uh, road because that, of course, can create sparks. Never, uh, this goes without saying, never toss your cigarettes on the ground for the sake of fire safety, but also it's littering, it's trash. Use grills on gravel or paved surfaces. That's a very big help there. Mow your lawn early in the morning and really never when it's windy or excessively dry outside. That's when you say, all right, I'm just gonna put this project off until things get better for me to mow the lawn. Never leave your wildfires, or your, not wildfires, your, fire, your fires unattended and always properly extinguish those campfires as well. So again, just a couple of quick tips here to kind of help prevent those new wildfires. Here's that taste of summer that we're seeing here for tomorrow. This heat is gonna expand a little bit eastward through the day 
on Wednesday. See how it expands? But then, as this storm system rises to the north, it flattens out that ridge. What that's going to do, number one, is suppress the heat. So temperatures by Thursday will, for the most part, start to drop. However, it still may be a little bit warmer for some of those uh, mountain locations, especially on Thursday. But then, as that low pressure shifts down to the south and east, it's going to push that hot air and that bubble of heat off to our west. Not only will the lateral temperatures to drop, but another aspect is the fact that this low pressure, by the end of this upcoming weekend, early next week, is going to dive down to the south, keep pushing that heat to our west, and actually usher in some cooler air. And that's going to mean significantly cooler temperatures by the end of this weekend and early next week. Your wave heights, as you can see going through Wednesday, they're still actually fairly high. As we take you into Thursday, all right, they're dropping a little bit, but still fairly high. Now, as a result, the National Weather Service has issued a hazardous seas warning for tomorrow. And that may even linger on into a Thursday as well. We'll see what those wave heights decide to do at that point. All right, let's take a look at your forecast for tonight. It's mild. Temperatures only dropping down to the mid-60s for the valley. We're staying mainly out of the 30s for most of the higher elevations, only dropping down in the mid-40s on average. Upper 40s, low 50s, Trinity County, low 50s inland, and looks like upper 40s to low 50s along the coast. Let's take a look at your Trinity County neighborhood forecast. Temperatures continue to tick up. We're noticing that, right? 96 for Douglas City, 93 for Weaverville and Lewiston, uh, 93 for Hay Fork, and 89 for Ruth. Now, again, as we take a look at that seven-day outlook, uh, you can see here for the coast, we're not going to see that drastic change, right? We're going from 70 on Wednesday back down to, you know, that, the low to mid-60s here, and then maybe even a little bit cooler by the time we do get into Tuesday of next week. We take you up north where we are going to notice that temperature drop is going to be the inland areas. Peaking tomorrow, uh, excuse me, peaking on, on tomorrow, yeah, peaking tomorrow, 96. Thursday, all right, now we're at Thursday, 91 degrees, temperatures start to drop. Upper 70s, though, by the beginning of next week. Here's your Siskiyou County neighborhood forecast. You remember I was talking about the peak of the heat wave. will actually probably be on Thursday for some of the mountain locations, like Mount Shasta, for example. It's peaking, I mean, really peaking for Wednesday and Thursday, and then temperatures start to drop after that. And that's pretty much the same situation here for Modoc County, although it peaks on Thursday, the high of 84, back down to the 70s by Friday and through the weekend. Your Eastern Mountains forecast, well, taking a look at Susanville, also peaking close to 90 on Thursday, but dropping down uh, in the mid to low 70s here by Monday and Tuesday of next week. And your Valley Neighborhood forecast, brought to you by NorCal Tractor. We're splitting hairs. Could we get up to 100 degrees in some of these spots? Sure, it's not out of the question. I've got you at 98 to 99 for the most part. Uh, 94 degrees for Whiskey Town, 98 for Lakehead, uh, Bella Vista, Palisadro, 99 degrees. Looking at your seven day forecast for Reading, temperatures do start to drop. And there you can see in the low 90s by Friday and Saturday, and then temperatures can dropping down to the 80s by the second half of the weekend and into early next week.